Welcome to the Burden and Blessing Podcast, a study and discussion forum on the truth of God's Word. Our summary verses of the books of the Bible introduce us to the theme of each book of the Old and New Testament scriptures so that we might have a deeper appreciation and understanding of God's Word of Truth. We pray that these brief studies will enable you to get more out of your daily reading and hearing of God's Holy Word. Welcome back to our 66 summary verses of the Bible. We continue on in our chronological order of the books of the Bible. And we thank you, Pastor Mayhew, for putting these in this chronological order. We had gone through Jonah last time, which is about 770 BC, before Christ. Here's we get into the prophet Amos. Again, we're looking at a lot of the Old Testament prophets. Some major wrote a lot that's recorded for us, some more minor. Here we have Amos that has eight chapters, and we can see that a lot of these is similar with some of the other prophets like Joel and so forth. So we're looking at right around 750 years before the birth of Christ. And Nathaniel, would you please read for us the summary verse for the book of Amos? We are reading from Amos chapter 4, verse 13. This comes from the New King James Version. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. Now, this is an interesting verse, Neil. Amos was from the tribe of Judah, but he was sent by the Lord across the border into the nation of Israel in order to proclaim impending judgment on that nation. And he does it in a very unique way. He does it by looking at all of the nations that surround Israel and pointing out that they are going to be judged. And you can almost, you can almost sit there with Amos and, and hear the people of Israel as as Amos comes to them and he's pointing out the error and how God is going to judge these nations thinking, yeah, yeah, all right. He's going to judge those people. He's going to get them. And so he goes around and he, he says, and this is that phrase that's repeated over and over again in the opening chapters of Amos for three transgressions and for four of Syria for three transgressions and for four of Aram for three transgressions and four of Philistia of Ammon of Moab of, of Edom of Judah. And you can again, you know, hear all the people cheering, and then he gets to Israel. Two chapters on all the surrounding nations, and he deals with seven chapters dealing with the errors of the people of Israel. And the people of Israel didn't want to hear what Amos had to say. They said, go back, go back to your land. You're not supposed to be up here. Go back. But the point that Amos is making is really clearly brought out in our verse for behold, he who forms mountains, who creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, who makes morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth. All of these nations, they were, they were worshiping false gods. And Amos said, there's only one God that matters. The Lord God of hosts is his name. We run into situations similar to the people of the Old Testament, where we think we're so different than the nations of the Old Testament. We're so far removed from all of it. But look around at the nations around us in our own nation and look at all of the gods that we falsely and blindly follow today. And we need that reminder that Amos brings to the people of Israel and to us still today. Uh, the one who forms the mountains, who creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, the Lord God of hosts is his name. He is the one who provides salvation for us. He is the one who comes in power to judge the nations who reject him and rebel against him. But it is only in that God that we have hope and salvation in the coming Savior, Jesus, which he finally gets to in the very final verses of chapter 9 of this book. He points us to that hope that we have in the Lord God of hosts. How about you? Anything stand out to you of the on the book of Amos, Neil? Yeah, well, first, I'm sorry for misspeaking with the eight versus the nine chapters. The ninth one is definitely not the one you want to forget about because it is primarily directed to Israel and those impending judgments. In all these sermons that Amos really speaks to the different nations and the, the tribes as well, you know, we can see this impending doom like you mentioned. And what I love about Amos is though he also talks about that remnant that the Lord was going to preserve. And the reason for that is that the promise of the coming Savior, the reason for that is in 
what the Lord had promised his people, that he would continue to dwell with them and be their God. And even though Amos brings a message of judgment, the Lord always shows mercy in the midst of that judgment. You know, you think of that with the flood and Noah. You think of that with the different plagues and the Egyptians. There's there's always this mercy in the midst of God's judgment. You think about in the eschatological things of the end of the world, yes, there's God's judgment, but there's mercy to the faithful. There's mercy to those who truly believe. And although Amos is a tough read to, to hear, you know, those messages of condemnation, like you said, that are are just kind of jarring and cut you to the bone and to the soul. You, you think of maybe James in the New Testament, where James is reminding the New Testament believers, just like Amos is reminding the Old Testament believers, to not be hypocrites with their faith, to walk in love of Christ, to show that in their actions, and not just go through the motions of ritual worship, but to truly praise and honor the living God, just like you said, the one true God, the one who created the heavens and the earth. So I think this summary theme is fantastic because again it calls for that attention behold this is the true god we need to follow and we need to continue to follow him faithfully not just by our words you want to close this with prayer yeah i would like to do that i'd like to use the words of johann schultz from the lutheran hymnal as he talks about the the error of idolatry but also the hope that is only found in the Lord God. We pray. All praise to God who reigns above, the God of all creation, the God of wonders, power, and love, the God of our salvation. With healing balm my soul he fills, the God who every sorrow stills, to God all praise and glory. I cried to him in time of need, Lord God, oh, hear my calling. For death, he gave me life indeed and kept my feet from falling. For this my thanks shall endless be. Oh, thank him, thank our God with me. To God all praise and glory. Ye who confess Christ's holy name, to God give praise and glory. Ye who the Father's power proclaim, to God give praise and glory. All idols underfoot be trod. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. To God, all praise and glory. Amen. We invite you to listen for new books each week on Burden and Blessing Podcast, where we believe and confess that every word of God is true. We pray that you will be assured that God's word is pure and is more precious than gold.